In this video, we're gonna review and tear down the Eco-Worthy 10 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Hey, if you're new around here, my name's Jeremy. I'm an electronics technician with about 15 years experience working with DC circuits and batteries. Here we go. So I bought this battery off Amazon. Before we look at that listing, let's, uh, let's check out what it says here on the back of this battery. When the load current exceeds maximum output current of the battery, the BMS will automatically disconnect the circuit. We're, we're gonna test that. If you see the, the little chart below all these cautions, uh, 10 amp hour, 120 watt hour, 12 volts, max charge discharge current, 10 amps. So we will test that out. Uh, discharge cutoff voltage, 10 volts. Let's hop over to Amazon and uh, check out check out the listing. So you can get for, looks like $55.99. You can actually check that box here and looks like you get 10% off. So that's like five. So you can pretty much get this battery for like 50 bucks, which is a great price for a 10 amp hour battery. It's like five bucks an amp hour, which is really, really good price. Let's check the, okay. So right here it says, uh, it's 2.46 pounds. Let's check that right now. I have a little scale here, guys. I am getting 2.4 pounds. So actually it comes in a little bit lighter than what they're advertising. This broken English is uh is killing me. Hi. If you follow me on Facebook, you know I'm yeah, sometimes I misspell words. But uh copper terminal T I R M I N A M I N A L. Uh yeah, they're broken English is it's pretty funny sometimes. So on this listing, what I'm most interested in is what these uh, BMS protections, what they have listed here for BMS protections. And it looks like overcharging, deep discharge, overload, overheating, and short circuit. So we are gonna test deep discharge. We're gonna see on the graph here at what point does the BMS cut out to prevent uh, low voltage damage to the cells. Uh, it says that it has a 10 amp max uh, draw on it. So we're going to test that out. We're going to see how high we can get it and see if it actually cuts out. Uh, and short circuit protection. We will definitely test the short circuit protection. We will do that last though because I've uh, damaged batteries before that said they had short su short circuit protection and uh, yeah, I, uh, I let the smoke out. Alright, let's check out our first test here. This is a discharge test on the battery analyzer. I did it at 70 degrees. I charged it at 70 degrees and then discharged it at 70 degrees. I did two of these tests. The other one I charged it at 70 degrees and these are all in Fahrenheit. And I discharged it in the freezer right here next to me. That's freezer at uh, right around 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's uh, let's compare those, those graphs and see what it looks like. So a typical uh, discharge curve for lithium iron phosphate, nice plateau here and then it just falls off this is a 10 amp hour battery and we got 10.03 so just past uh, the capacity test at room temperature charge discharge room temperature um, let's look at something I like to call the helix factor and that is uh, helix fish fish finders hummingbird fish finders for the most part um, they recommend 10.8 volts or higher. And if you want to see uh, what I'm talking about with that 10.8 mark, I'll leave a video up here where I uh, tested another battery with the, the Helix and uh, there's a bunch of numbers that just weren't matching up. So uh, make sure to check out that video if you haven't seen it yet. So let's bring in the cold. Let's see how this battery handles uh, discharging in cold temperatures. So this green one is 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and this is kind of to be expected as far as uh, the performance of the battery. All batteries are going to have are, are not going to perform as well in the cold. That's across the line. Um, this one did pretty well, I think, in the cold. Uh, really started dropping off over here. 
let's find that helix factor, the 10.8 volts. Right about there. So by the time you get down to 10.8 volts, you would have used about eight hours of this battery. For the most part, you're gonna want your batteries to cut out right around 10 volts. And uh, and the reason being is because you want it, it, that provides your low voltage protection. Really, you start getting under that 10 volt mark. Um, you have four cells in series. You really don't want those cells getting below uh, 2.5 volts. So each, then you, since they're in series, it's 10 volts. When you start getting below that, um, that's when your low voltage damage could happen um, and it looks like when it was cold for some reason the BMS was slow to react I'm not sure why I don't really understand why we can see right here we got to 10 volts and we were there for about I don't know 15 20 minutes under 10 volts 268 minutes yeah so for about 20 minutes we were under that 10 volt mark and I don't know what kind of damage that causes to the battery when you are under that mark for so long but it looks like it cut out at 8.88 .88 volts this other one cut out at uh, 9.36 but look at the time um, basically 300 minutes right there and I mean it was it was underneath that 10 volt threshold for like a minute and a half or so yeah just something to be aware of might not want to if you're taking this out ice fishing and you're fishing out in the cold might not want to run it all the way down uh, I don't know to what degree that damage uh, how much that damages the battery uh, that I could do those tests but it probably take a long time and I got other videos to make so just be aware maybe not run it all the way down if you're out in the cold so after I discharged the battery in the freezer I put the charger on it to test if it had low uh, temperature charging protection so one thing I do want to point out with these chargers is to uh, make sure you plug it into the wall I've had a few calls now where guys hook up their battery charger and it turns green and and they complain about their battery not taking a charge uh, green is fully charged or disconnected uh, from the battery but uh, it will turn green if it's not plugged into the wall so make sure you plug in your chargers guys so one of the most common questions I get since starting this uh, video series is what batteries do I recommend uh, and I've gotten a lot of emails about it if you look in the video description you'll find a list of batteries I do recommend. I'm hoping I can recommend this one. Uh, well, we'll see at the end of the video, but uh, for five bucks an amp hour, it'd be, uh, it'd be a steal to be able to recommend this battery. It'd be a great buy for you guys, so keep watching. Here we go. So the specs on this battery say 10 amps and the BMS will shut it off. It's time to test that. So we're gonna hook it up to this guy right here and uh, we can control how many amps goes through this battery. So first things first, put that on. And it looks like we have 13.3 volts. We are gonna watch, this is the amp right here. We're gonna watch that. And basically how this works is this controls the current going into the heat sink here. This heat heats it up and this fan uh, cools it. Ten point one hasn't turned off yet. Nothing's really getting hot. So we're at 12 amps right now. Um, 
obviously it failed that test it does not have overcurrent protection uh, so let's let's max it out let's see how high this thing goes it's getting warm here I feel it Fifteen amps. Wires are starting to get a little bit warm. So we are fifty percent above the cutoff, and it's still going. Okay, 16, we're holding that 16.1. I'm just gonna shut it down because there's more tests I wanna do and I don't wanna completely destroy this battery. Let's try the short circuit protection. It did say it had this. If you see my other videos, you know <laughs> this doesn't always turn out the way we hope for it to turn out. So, let's see. God damn it. Yeah, I kinda suspected <laughs> that. All right. Let's put it on there, see if we can hold it on there for a few seconds. Maybe it'll, it'll activate. Well, like most of these cheap batteries, the BMS in them does not live up to uh, what they advertise. I know a lot of guys, you know, I get a lot of comments. Well, maybe you got a dud, you know, maybe, you know, you just got a faulty battery. But here's the deal, guys. I seem to get a lot of faulty batteries. So... I don't think that's it. Yeah, I uh, I can't think of any other test I want to do to this guy. Uh, if you have any suggestions, make sure to leave a comment below in the in the comment section. Hey, while you're while you're at it, hit that thumbs up button. Really helps me out. Uh, get these battery videos out and uh, helps me buy more batteries. So if you like what I'm doing, thumbs up. Let's void the warranty. Here we go. All right, let's tear into this guy. If you guys hear that humming in the background, sorry about that. Uh, this freezer kicks on every once in a while and I got 3D printers going in the background. So, um, just how it is at this high quality production shop. Finally. Oh, they're pouch cells. What the shit? I've never seen seen that in one of these batteries. They're not even cylindrical cells. Whoa. Okay. So it's BMS. In case you were wondering what the numbers were on it, looks like an HP07SA. As fishermen, uh, I really wish they'd do a better job of, of sealing batteries that they market to fishermen. This company, not so much, but you know, I'd sure like to see a gasket around these, this top here. Um, I'd like to see some fishing companies start doing that. But, I mean, hell, when I was selling batteries, I'd always get guys that drop their battery in the water, get wet in their kayak or what, whatnot. So, balance leads here. I like that. They put a little caulk right there uh, to keep that connection. I do not like that they twisted them all up. So, I mean, I've, really, as far as I can tell, this BMS, it's really not doing anything but maybe cell balancing and uh, low voltage protection. It's not doing short circuit. It's not doing, uh, I don't even see a temp, oh, is that a temperature probe? So far I don't even see a temperature probe for the, the high temperature cutoff. And the thing about these pouch cells, um, I'm not, they're a lot easier to 
puncture, especially when a guy is trying to rip them out of the case. Uh, this BMS is junk. You know, it uh, it doesn't do most of the things it's advertised to do. It doesn't provide short circuit protection. Doesn't provide overcurrent. Uh, it was not advertised for low voltage or low temperature. I do not see a temperature probe on here, so I'm kind of guessing it does not have uh, high temperature protection. So, you know, when a company does that, it kind of really turns me off on them. Uh, when they advertise a bunch of bunch of stuff that they don't have and you know how's the average joe blow gonna know so that's why i'm i'm making these videos here guys so if you like what i'm doing make sure you hit that thumbs up button i'm not gonna pull this out uh these cells are pretty much wrapped up in like thick aluminum foil and i don't want to puncture that and i more than likely will trying to get this cell out it's in there pretty good so uh if you want to see a video where I actually did like the battery, hit this one right here. If you want to see another disaster, probably worse than this one, hit that one. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe.